Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and this is Create Your Own Cozy. have some exciting news to share with you guys make sure you stick around to the end to find out what it is in this week's video I do five projects from my thrifted stash I am still on a thrifting fast until the first of April if you want to see what I come up with stick around project number one is a metal base that I've had in my stash for quite a while when I thrifted it, I envisioned it being like a little makeup tray or for perfume. And so I looked through my wood stash. That is a whole different collection, guys. This is some underlayment where I'd used part of it, but I had a little bit left over. And look, it worked out. Um, here is a copy of what it is. When I get underlayment, I like to get the stainable kind so that I have options. So I'm just measuring it out using my saw. You can see it's totally not square. So I am going to make sure it is nice and even when I cut it. Now it fits right inside and let's get painting this metal. I'm at the very bottom of my white swan here and I just spray it with a water mister and look, I could still get another project out of it. So I do two coats of white swan over this metal. I do wet distress it just a little bit. And then I had this in my stash too, um, just a little bit. I think I, it's driftwood. I just wanted it to not look so fresh. So I do um, a coat of driftwood and just have it be a nice little two-toned tray. Now I'm using E6000 on the metal, um, on the ends and across the center there. And then I'm gonna put the wood in and make sure I have some nice heavy things and let it dry for at least 24 hours. Guys, it was probably like this for like three days. So I'm pretty sure it is set and ready to go. My favorite IOD transfer is the Brocant transfer book. I have a new one, but I am not letting myself take it out of the wrapper until I get through a little bit of the remnants of this one. So I'm grabbing this little wording. I think it looks really great. It adds a little something something, but you won't feel bad putting stuff in the tray. So I cut down the, the um, excess so it fits in there. I measure it out because just visual measurement, unfortunately, is not always right. I put that right where I want the letters to be so that I have a good visual. And then I use the transfer tool that comes with it and I rub it in. After that, I burnish it in and then seal it with liquid patina. I wanted more of a matte sealer on here. And I think this is a really easy way to make little trays to put within your decor that makes little areas a little bit more grounded. Do you guys like it? Project number two, I am embarrassed to say, has been an intended project of mine since we moved from the other house. It has been five years, guys. But my husband found this piece of reclaimed wood and I had this chair back and I had already decided I loved how they looked together, but I just never put them together. I moved with them, in fact, this chair back cracked a little bit in the move because I didn't properly package it. So I am getting this done today and I am crushing my to-do list even if it is five years later. I am putting wood glue um, in between these little cracks. Guys, wood glue is like super glue for wood. It is, once it dries, it is better than nails. 
So I am clamping it down, rubbing back the excess glue that came out. And I did go over it with just one coat of white swan because I didn't love the finish exactly. And I went a little crazy and got it in the grooves and didn't like that. So I'm just using a paint opener to kind of scratch that out. Then I'm putting wood glue around the center section since it kind of rounds. This is the part that actually hits the reclaim wood. So I'm putting wood glue. Once that dries, it will be solid. Next, I am making sure I'm measuring it right, but I do a visual since one side is kind of curved. I just wanted to visually see that it looked right. I'm using these brad nails just to keep it in place, but the glue is really the hero of this project. Look how good it looks. Better late than never, am I right? What do you guys think? So I may be on a thrifting fast, but when people hand me stuff for free, I can't say no. So John, my store owner, said, if I give this to you, will you promise to give me a mention? So here is John, and I need to say our store won Best of Forsyth County. Angry Mamas Antiques and Interiors won Best of Forsyth County. Anyway, that's my little shout out to my store and my store owner, which I am so happy with. Um, but I decided I wanted to update this piece just a little bit. It was a little, um, am I in my mom's kitchen? And I, while I would not put this in my kitchen, I want to be as close to if I were going to put this in the kitchen, what would I want it to look like? So it was already very well covered with a nice shiny top coat so I went over it with DIY's white wax and just kind of rubbed it back it rubbed a little bit too far on the one side but just this little simple update and I feel like it is more modern and someone might grab it to put in their kitchen I just could not cover up the little farmer and the ducks what do you guys think would you have sanded it down and used it for something else i just couldn't they were too precious somebody is going to love it this next little guy was also free from john but if i'm getting free stuff it doesn't go to my stash i work on it right away and get it in the booth or get it tagged right away and get in the booth. This leave a note little crafty looking thing reminds me of something my mom would have had in our kitchen growing up. She had something like this with these little bubble letters. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But I am going to use Iron Orchids Candy Cane Cottage. If you guys were lucky enough to get this transfer book, you know that these little roses, like I feel like they're still wintry. They're, they're Valentine's Day-like. Day so I was just gonna pop off the letters, but the little uh, mailbox popped off too. My mom used to have something like this. It was all of our family members as little dogs and we had collars with our names on it and it had a dog house. And I am the oldest of four, so I was usually in the doghouse, or my youngest brother was in the doghouse. Anyone else suffer from being the oldest or the youngest? Those middle kids got away with so much. Um, this last little part really wouldn't come off. I hit it with an orbital sander, and it still wouldn't come off. So I'm questioning what I want. Originally, I wanted to do just the wood. And then I was like, well, if I cover this spot up, I think I could... Um, keep it there. So I wipe it down just with the wet paper towel to get the dust off. And then I was like, you know what? Um, let's just work on this little mailbox. It had a little scratch on it. So I knew that this little tiny transfer needed to cover that scratch. When you're doing transfers on a round surface, I have found that it's best to start to one side and work your way across. And that's just kind of what I did. Sorry for some of the angles. <laughs> the way that I have the camera set up it is hard for me to see. And I needed to make sure 
I got this right. So I'm just working my way around. I'm not going over the edge. So some of the transfer is just coming up and I'm fine with that. And um, after I get it all the way on, I do rub it in with my finger. And I think that is a perfect little way to cover up the scratch. I did not want to paint this metal box. And then that transfer got on the front. So I just scratched that off. Now back to the wooden piece. I was like, what paint color would I do? Let's try dark and decrepit and see if it covers up this uneven stain. And boy, it did a great job. I just put it on there with a chip brush and rubbed it back. And then I decided where I wanted this to be. I didn't want it to look like it was underneath where the mailbox was going. So I put that mailbox down there for my visual. And then I just worked my way on the flat surface. And then here is another example. I am going to round it around the sides with this since it'll be hanging from the wall. I thought it'd be nice to kind of see it from the side as well. So I just work my way. You can round it. Um, just get it on there, rub it in with your fingers. And then I do seal this in with liquid patina and glue it on with E6000 for the permanent hold, hot glue for the temporary hold. I think this is so cute. I considered doing white wax over the wood, but then I was like, you know what? I think someone's gonna love this. Let's just keep it as is for now. Unless you guys tell me white wax it. If you do that, I might just try it. But for now, this is the final result. And I think it is so much better than when it started with the bubble letters. What do you guys think? For my fifth and final project today, I am going to get out these two tins that I found when I was cleaning out my stash. There are wonderful memories with these tins. I used to work at Disney uh, through college because I was born and raised in Orlando. Sharing so much about myself today. Um, and I got these at the Mexican Pavilion at Epcot and they had mirrors in them and I definitely had a tin phase but I thought the mirrors broke let's update these just a little bit I put two coats of gypsy green and I did not wet distress them at all I figured I was going to use some type of a wax or something to bring out the details now I'm cutting I'm using some paper from a thrifted music book that I got and just kind of folding along the sides and cutting it to size so that these pages kind of slip in. I have this gorgeous stamp, the IOD stamp Birds and Bees. Love this stamp and had not gotten it out. Like, let's get ready for spring, guys. So I found this particular bird for the little square one. Thought that would be precious in there. And then found this bigger one for the round one. So I am going to coat the top of this with big top i did want kind of a shinier finish so that's why i chose to use big top i just did that and let it dry and then i got back to working on the insides so i am going to do the stamp paint stamp technique do one stamp in the center guys I don't know where this little thin mount has been my whole life but it is so helpful to get things in the center I stamp the first bird and I'm not as worried about the stamp because I am going to paint over the top I am going to try the painterly paint for the first time I looked up this picture of a bluebird and decided that I would give it a shot. I'm starting out with just the clay base paint in the color white swan as the base. The good thing about painterly is it works well with the DIY paint. They blend really well together. This is my first time using this new paint and I am liking, first of all, I squeezed way too much out. You need so little, but I am liking the ease of it 
and the beautiful way it can blend with the white. I am a little bit intimidated by all the bright colors, but they can all be muted down by white. Now, you people who love bright colors, this paint really is totally for you. There are a lot of really bright colors, but they can also be mixed with a white swan and you can do your own paint mixing. So now I am just taking a little bit of painterly at a time, kind of dragging it through the white swan, getting it to blend. Everything is still wet. Um, hindsight, maybe I should have planned for this being the top, right? Like I think it's a really cool look, but in my mind, um, I was going to stamp over the top. Another thing is I didn't like where this bird hit on the music sheet. Like there's a big bar where the eye was, but the cool part is I painted over that. So that wasn't a problem. I almost restarted the whole project because there's a bar over the eye. And then I was like, wait a second, I'm about to paint the base. So that won't be a problem. So I just kind of do this little painting to both of them. And then I let it dry completely and then stamp right back over the top of it. So it has a stamp, then paint, then stamp look. Maybe next time I'll do it where I'm just stamping it and using that kind of as a template for me to pretend like I can draw. So maybe that's what I'll do in a future video. I just really love how this worked out and I will be trying some more of this later. I could have just left it just green, but I wanted these tins to shout a little louder and kind of be aged because there is such a aged look to the paper. So I'm going over this with dark and decrepit and just wiping it back, using it like a glaze. I also could have used a dark or black wax. Look, this transfer would have looked good as well. What do you guys think of the final look?
All right, did you guys have a favorite? My favorite part is getting that one um, reclaimed wood project that I wanted for my own home finally done. Like how easy was that? Oh, you, why did it take me so long guys? I don't know, but I'm thankful that it's done. I'm counting the wins. I am crushing getting through my stash. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite project was. Let me know how you're crushing things in your life this week. Are you crushing your stash? Are you working one hour at a time to go through your spaces that frustrate you? Let me know in the comments below. If you are new here, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to all so you get updated every time I upload a new video. And I would love it if you would share with your people if you think that they would like this Create Your Own Cozy Space. Now for the exciting announcement. Guys, I'm an IOD retailer. <laughs> I have been talking about this for quite a long time now and um, I have been on their design team. Gosh, goodness, my their creative team and they've been sending me stuff um, for free because I lo they love what I do with it and they love my love for it. So I am so excited to finally be able to carry the stuff that I love so much. Details will be coming about my actual booth location. I am going to be opening a new location um, in a different territory. Um, that is in the works, but my first order has been purchased. I can put it on my website and I've already added all the molds. And today I'm adding all the transfers so that right when I get it, I can go live on my website and then work on my actual booth space. Oh, guys, I'm so excited. It's so fun. I had this as a goal last year and I said, let's try again. And look, here it is the beginning of February and I've already hit one of my goals for this year and I'm very excited. Um, I love the heart behind the company which is a major factor. I love the designs of the products, the IOD cells, and I love the quality of the products. So I'm excited. Um, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna start off carrying the whole line, but if I use it, I will carry it. I'm gonna grab the things that I gravitate toward and hopefully as I expand, I can carry more as you guys become my customers. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. So check out my website, www.createyourowncozy.com. This is a fun type of growth. Um, I don't know if you can tell from my face. I've had a grin on my face for quite a bit. So I'm very excited to share this with you guys. Um, yay. So stay tuned for all that stuff. Thank you for sticking around to the end to hear my exciting news. Um, what are things that you guys have been dreaming of that have either come true or about to come true? I would love to hear that in the comments below. It is so great when things that you visualize for your life or for your business actually happen. It just feels like you're, you're on the right path. Um, and I wanted to thank you guys for your encouragement and for being on this journey with me. So I am thankful for you. I am so glad you're here and I will see you guys in the next video. I. This guy was totally checking himself out in the mirror, but the second I got the phone out, he got super shy. I will try to catch him in action, but here's your Henry fix for all you guys who love him.